911, what's the location of your emergency? On the night of January 19th, um, a fire alarm went off and it was 4.30 in the morning and just like any other night, just kind of said, you know what, let me get out of here. Honestly, I, I would say it took us maybe anywhere between seven to 10 minutes to get dressed. You know, we had to put on our sweater and our coat and he said, you know, it's cold out there and, and we fully got dressed. And when I opened the door, uh, uh, just a, a cloud of black thick smoke just rushed in on me and I hurried up and shut the door and I said to Al, I said, this is the real thing. You know, nothing on me had caught on fire. Um, I just know that, you know, I felt the intense heat from the fire. Um, and as I got outside, you know, it just, the, the pain be start, started to get immense. And, um, you know, I realized that my hands were just like really, really, you know, um, they would, it was like literally they were burning. They were still burning underneath my skin. Al was crawling the same path that I was crawling. When he got to the lounge, one of the ceiling tiles caught on fire and fell on his back. And it, uh, you know, it burned him. Alvaro was burned from his head to his torso. Here are five critical steps to surviving a fire. Step one, always know at least two ways out of a building. Step two, keep all exits clear, limit storage, and do not block sprinkler heads. Step three, always evacuate when you hear the sound of an alarm. Step four, use stairwells, not the elevators. Stay low to the ground where air is less toxic. Use a second exit if the primary exit is blocked with fire or smoke. Step five, once you are out of the building, report to your staging area. Notify a community assistant, a police officer, or a firefighter, letting them know if your friends and roommates are missing. Burns are one of the toughest things to ever deal with. It's, it's one of those things where you know, you're going to be physically distorted for the rest of your life. And not only, you know, it's physical, but it's mental. You know, it's, it's you know, um, it's one of those things where, you know, you just, you just, you're not the same person anymore. You know, my hands will never look the way they looked prior. And it's something that, you know, um, it's, it's just unbelievable to have to deal with, you know, the, the therapy to, you know, to, to do the simple things. Like I had to learn how to write my name all over again. I had to learn how to, you know, button my shirt. Um, just those little things that you take for granted. It was all because of a prank going awry. It was all because of, you know, two boys who decided that, you know, they wanted to, you know, light a banner on fire. And this banner ended up catching, you know, the whole lounge on fire. Three of my classmates died, you know. Um, 58 of us were injured. Um, it's, it's, it changed so many people's lives that it's, it's just unbelievable to this day. From January 2000 to December 2010, there have been 105 fatalities resulting from campus fires. In the 2009 through 2010 academic year, 11 students lost their lives in campus fires. The majority of campus fires are caused by cooking, smoking, and using candles all which could have been prevented. The biggest thing to me is that they, you know, three parents lost their children um, and they'll never be able to get them back. You know, me, fortunately, me and Alvaro, um, even though we are, you know, f you know, we have, you know, these scars, we still have our lives. Something like this is something to be taken seriously and it's just a rude awakening. After this, it definitely, you know, it'll, it'll be in the back of my head, you know, this could happen, so. I would definitely get out. I hope that it really impacts the students in a really positive way to take these things very seriously.